Now, I don't know if it happened this way or not, but I know this story is true. That's the way Native American storytellers introduce their traditional tales from their tribes. And I like that sentence. It helps me to listen to the Bible stories. The Bible is a collection of a huge number of stories, and they are a mix of fact and fiction, of history and parable. But whether fact or fiction, the Bible stories are about truth. That includes the story of Barabbas. Lots of people, and I am one of them, don't think this event actually took place. It's a fictional story, but a parable of an important truth. It is, after all, unlikely on the face of it. There's Pilate, a colonial governor, trying to keep order. His province is out on the fringe of the empire, and he's ruling a cantankerous, difficult group of people. They have rebelled violently before, and they will rebel again. We have descriptions of Pontius Pilate from several sources outside the Bible. And these secular sources very clearly picture Pontius Pilate as cruel and brutal and ruthless. Would such a Roman imperial governor release any prisoner a crowd came up and requested? Really, that's very, very unlikely. So if that picture of the mob screaming for Barabbas and calling crucify about Jesus bothers you, take heart. It didn't happen that way. But it is still a true story, and it still should bother us. Barabbas is called an insurrectionist. Depending on your point of view, he was either a violent terrorist or a heroic freedom fighter. The gospel story of Barabbas, then, is about a choice. It's about the choice between Jesus and Barabbas, between a nonviolent revolution and a violent one, between peace and war. Now, the Gospels were written in their final form after the year 70. They were assembled just after another in a series of violent Israelite rebellions against the Roman Empire. The story of Barabbas was a parable of the choice people faced. Mark the evangelist thinks they made the wrong choice. They chose the way of Barabbas over the way of Jesus. They chose violence over non-retaliation. They chose a dangerous and desperate war instead of an equally dangerous and radical peace. Dr. Phil, the TV psychologist, might ask them his famous question, how's that working for you? The answer would be, not very well. The Romans crushed that rebellion in the year 70. They came in and leveled the temple of Jerusalem. Yet another rebellion broke out 60 years after that. The Romans crushed that one too. They completely destroyed Israel. And after the year 130, it was illegal for Jews to live in Jerusalem. And they didn't do so until the year 1948, almost 2,000 years later. I think the Barabbas story is not historical fact, but is true parable. The life and teaching of Jesus presents the world with a choice. Violence or nonviolence, war or peace, hatred or love. Mark the Evangelist implies that people make the wrong choice. They choose Barabbas. They choose the sword. And so the story should still bother us. Human beings make the same choice almost all the time. In the roughly 3,000 years of recorded human history, war is dominant over peace almost all the time. It was true then, and it's true to this day. If people could not learn that lesson from Jesus and from Mark the Evangelist, Maybe they could have learned it from Aesop and his famous fables. You remember the one about the sun and the wind? The sun and the wind argue with each other about who is stronger. 
And then down below them on a road, they see a man walking with a cloak wrapped around him. So they decide to have a contest. Whoever can get the cloak off, the man is stronger. And the wind begins and blows and blows and almost rips that cloak off the man, but the man clutches it more tightly around himself to stay warm. The wind blew and blew, but couldn't get the cloak off the man's back. Then the sun takes a turn. Gentle, warm beams shine down on this man, and of course, he eventually takes the cloak off and goes and sits under a shade tree. And the fable concludes that gentle persuasion is stronger than force. Sun and wind, peace and war, Jesus and Barabbas. Now the trouble with all this, of course, is that in the short term, the sword is mightier than the pen. And it speaks louder at any given moment. In the short term, the ones with the swords and the guns usually win. But we still have the choice. We still can choose the way of Jesus. We can choose peace over war. We can choose non-retaliation over violence. We can choose love over hatred. I'm not saying it's easy, because it sure isn't easy. But we can do it. Maybe the words of Martin Luther King Jr. can sum up what I'm trying to say here. In March of 1965, he spoke at the end of the third Civil Rights March on Montgomery, Alabama. He spoke on the steps of the Capitol building in Montgomery, and this is what he said. I know you are asking today, how long will it take? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, however frustrating the hour, it will not be long. Because truth crushed to earth will rise again. How long? Not long, because no lie can live forever. How long? Not long, because you shall reap what you sow. How long? Not long, because the moral arc of the universe is long, but bends toward justice. So humanity has a choice. It's a really hard choice, but it's a really clear choice. War or peace? Hatred or love? The way of Barabbas or the way of Jesus?